Hello everyone, Dr. Sunil Dand, internal medicine physician. Welcome to another video. I could talk for a long time about my thoughts on statins, how we over-prescribe them, and how I don't agree with the lipid cholesterol hypothesis of heart disease. In fact, I did a longer lecture last year on this very topic, and that link is down below for those of you who haven't heard my lecture. This gets to a larger point in healthcare and medicine, namely how pharmaceutical companies and big business interests are able to run absolute rings around doctors who are not going to critically analyze data themselves. They're not going to look at real science like the absolute risk reduction and number needed to treat. They're not going to independently think things through is what I am doing for the patient and prescribing like candy because make no mistake, these medications are prescribed like candy. What are the actual benefits? No, the culture is we will do what our physician society tells us to do. We will blindly follow. Never mind the fact that said physician society is heavily influenced by big business interests and funding. Let's not really think about that. We will do whatever they say because whoopee do. Guess what? We fix a number. Shouldn't we get very excited? We prescribe a statin and somebody's LDL, their quote unquote bad cholesterol, comes down. Isn't that great? But really, if anyone wants to be very smart and think about this in a true logical and scientific way, yes, you have fixed the number, but you haven't fixed the upstream problem of oxidative stress and inflammation. In fact, you haven't even touched that. You have put a band-aid on a problem. So yes, you do lower the bad cholesterol, but what are the actual benefits? benefits. When you look at the absolute risk reduction, the number needed to treat, and what studies have actually told us about if people take this medication religiously for decades, how much do they actually have improved outcomes? How much longer do they live? This data is all out there, and I encourage you, if you're in a situation where you're being told to take the medication, the least your doctor could do is be able to share this data with you. So do ask them, if I take this medicine for 10 or 20 years, Tell me, what do these studies show are the true benefits? How much will my risk be reduced by? You might be very surprised with the answer to that. But on this note, statins being overprescribed, we have had a new development. Take a look at this. Here we go. This was published in a major medical publication, Becker's Hospital Review. New heart disease risk tool finds 40% fewer people need statins, according to the study. 40% fewer people out of millions, tens of millions taking this medication. That is a very big deal. A new risk assessment for heart disease found that 40% fewer people would meet the criteria for a statin prescription. The study was published by researchers at the University of Pittsburgh, and it was published in JAMA Internal Medicine, which is a major medical journal, and it compared the results from Prevent, a new heart disease risk calculator that was released by the American Heart Association last year, and the 2013 guidelines from the American Heart Association and the American College of Cardiology, which is the current standard. The study looked at data from almost 4,000 adults aged between 40 and 75, who are the main group that these medications are prescribed in. And as I said, this particular article was published only within the last several days. So check out the further links down below if you want to go to the actual study data, but I'm going to summarize it for you here. The 10-year risk of developing heart disease determined by the new assessment was about half that of the older guidelines, meaning some 4 million people in the US who currently take statins for primary prevention may not need them, the study authors said. And I would hazard a guess that that is an underestimate. It's probably way more than 4 million people. The new assessment, which was developed to be more accurate, removed race from the calculation and replaced it with a person's zip code, including factors such as kidney disease, obesity, and a marker of poor blood sugar control. They're probably talking about HbA1c and calculated risk separately for men and women. And they say here with the new risk calculator, there will be new guidelines to go with it. And this story was released in other publications as well. Here we have science data statins for heart disease prevention could be recommended for far fewer Americans if new risk equation is adopted. And it says here, the study examined the potential impact of widespread adoption of the PREVENT equations, which were released by the American Heart Association in November 2023 to update physicians' go-to calculators. So let's see what will actually happen. I'm sure there will be a lot of pushback from the pharmaceutical industry. But let me share some basic statistics with you here. 
on statins and how much money they've made and how commonly they are prescribed. Since their introduction, statins have generated significant revenue globally. It is estimated that the cumulative sales of statins worldwide have exceeded hundreds of billions of dollars. For instance, from 2003 to 2013 alone, global sales of statins were reported to be over $200 billion. That is a staggering number, more than the GDP of entire nations. How about America? Well, in the USA for some time, statins have been consistently among the top selling drugs. Annual sales in the US have varied over the years due to factors like patent expirations and the introduction of generic versions. Drug companies don't like that. However, annual sales of statins in the US have often been in the range of 15 to $20 billion a year. Again, we're talking about numbers again, which are more than the entire GDP of small countries. Millions of people around the world take statins and estimates suggest that around 200 million people globally are prescribed statins. 200 million people and it wouldn't surprise me that if current trends continue and our metabolic health catastrophe continues to get worse that number will soon approach 1 billion people unless this new risk calculator changes things. In the United States, it is estimated that about 35 million adults are prescribed statins. This number represents a significant portion of the adult population, particularly among older adults. So what is the most lucrative statin? By a long way, it is atorvastatin, Lipitor. This drug was initially manufactured by Pfizer and it became the best-selling drug of all time, generating over $150 billion in revenue from its introduction in 1996 until its patent expired in 2011. Even after becoming available as a generic, torvastatin continues to be widely prescribed. The overall consensus from the medical establishment is that statins are a cornerstone of the management of cardiac disease because they improve cholesterol, of course they fix the number, and they lower the risk of heart attacks and strokes. In fact, it is protocol to prescribe high-dose statins after a heart attack or a stroke based on the studies. But again, if you look at the actual study results, if you follow the science, the results are nowhere near as good as you may expect in terms of reducing risk. Yes, there may be some risk reduction shown. They have to come up with some risk reduction in order to prescribe or recommend prescribing these medications, but it's nowhere near as beneficial as you might expect, given by the enthusiasm of the medical establishment. So in summary then, statins are still dished out like absolute candy. Tens of millions of people in the United States are on statins, hundreds of millions of people around the world. They are generating a lot of money. But let me be very honest with you as a doctor. That is my duty, my job, to be honest with you as a doctor. Statins may well fix the number, but they are not going to touch the upstream problem. And what most doctors don't really tell their patients in a lot of detail is, yes, I can prescribe you this statin and we can get very happy about fixing a number. But if you truly want to fix the upstream problem of oxidative stress, of inflammation, which is leading to your cholesterol numbers being elevated, and this goes along as well with insulin resistance, which is another huge topic that I've talked about a lot, the way you do that is by eliminating ultra-processed foods produced by food corporations. Get them out of your life. Minimize sugars and refined carbohydrates and your risk will be reduced probably a hundred times more than taking a statin. That's the best thing you can do for yourself. Even if you make small changes, it's going to be much better than this statin prescription. And I wish more doctors would be direct with patients about the true benefits of their pharmacological interventions compared with lifestyle interventions, which may be harder, but I do think that if more and more patients knew just how much lifestyle interventions will have much more of a benefit than all of these prescriptions, then more people might choose to go down this route. In other words, this statin prescription is not going to save you, but do you want to know what will save you? Is doing your best to get away from the toxic environment that you're in, predominantly food environment. Do that and you will be much better placed to live a healthier life. The choice is yours. Thanks everyone for watching. Feel free to comment down below. Check out my website and my free downloads. Those links are also down below. Hit the like button if you like this video and the bell button for more similar videos in the future. We will speak again very soon.